For our new project that we're going to be working on, we are going to make three-dimensional fossils that come off of our canvas. We will be sculpting paper. We will be using Mod Podge, which is similar to glue, um, just a little bit more tough. You will each get to use one of our fancy gesso brushes. These are pretty expensive, so it is your job to take care of them. You will each also get index cards to be drawing your fossils on. For today's lesson, I am going to be drawing a plant. In yours, you may include plant or animals that exist in a region or in one of our soil layers that we talked about in class. So my first step before I even get my canvas is I'm going to draw out what my project is going to look like. So I want to think about what what specific um, parts of my plant do I want to stick up? So I'm just going to start drawing out some of the leaf shapes. You are welcome to um, draw any of your um, pictures that you find online for a specific area, or you can use your notes from class. That would probably be the better idea. Notice how here already I am working on um, showing different variety size shapes. Plants do not all have the same shape. So your fossil should not either, okay? I'm going to fill my entire line here with areas of the leaves that come off of this stem. If you find a picture online that you would like to draw out on your card, that is totally fine. You should be drawing really, really slow as you get all the shapes and lines correct for the animal that you chose to put on your canvas. Now this here is going to just guide us as to what we're going to have put on the canvas. I think I'm okay for right now with what I have. So now, um, the canvas that each of you will receive is like so. The white on a canvas is called gesso. Most canvases are already gessoed. So once you have all your index cards drawn out, you are going to lay them out on your canvas and you are going to decide how you want each one to be laid. Let's say on this one I do a spiral. taking my time. As you guys are trying to figure out what types of animals or plant life that you want to show, keep in mind that you will need to be creating paper sculptures of these to glue onto our canvas. So please do not think that you can do more than what's possible for this project. It's great, it's great to think outside of the box but it's not going to work well if you think of something super creative and then you're not able to actually draw the image correctly. Now, one thing before I put my canvas back down, notice the size difference in these. I have one drawing that's super large and I've got one that's smaller. For your project, you will need five drawings total. And then, um, I would like to see at least one plant, but you can do as many animals as you want, but they need to all be from the same layer of dirt or from the same region, okay? So you have a little bit of flexibility. 
Now, when we get our canvas, and put that back in front of us, I'm going to lay out my leaf in any direction that I think looks really cool. Maybe I'll do it like this. And I'm going to lay out my shell. Now, what I'm going to do is take newspaper and I tear a piece up. What I'm using is called newsprint. It is similar to newspaper, but um, it does not have the text. So starting with one little piece of this newsprint paper, I'm going to ball it up. And I'm going to be working with this paper for a little bit. Now, um, my goal is to soften this paper so much that I could mold it into the shape of one of my leaves. It's not going to be perfect, so don't try to get it perfect, but just mold it, okay? Once you have a shape that looks like it could match one of your leaves, we are going to take our gesso brush and our Mod Podge. Dip it in just a little bit. You can go ahead and paint some down onto the canvas. This does dry pretty quick, so you need to make sure that you're moving fast. For this first part, just focus on getting these main shapes down. Okay. So there's part one of my flower. I chose to do this large leaf. So I'm going to tear up another piece. And this time I'm gonna to try to make one of my smaller ones. So I'm working this paper until it's nice and soft, trying to get a mold for the shape leaf that I want. And I'm gonna start bending and folding certain edges to match one of the leaf shapes. Next step is to lay down my Mod Podge right in this area and then I'm going to stick this down. So when you go to make your paper shapes, they do not need to be perfect. They do not have to match what you have put on your index card. But you should be working really hard to get the variety in shape and size, and then just sculpting the paper to fit the shape that you had in mind. Now once I finish all my leaves in this side of my canvas and my leaves start to match this kind of image, you will take your Mod Podge and you will simply brush all that Mod Podge over top. And we want to try to fill in the gaps. You can see this is popping up. Do your best just to cover that super, super thick with Mod Podge. Hold it down for a couple seconds just to get it to stick. And this will most likely start to stick as we begin putting more and more layers of the Mod Podge on as well as um, the tissue paper that we are using to represent dirt. So as you can see, I'm loading up my gesso brush. I'm just coating this thing with lots and lots of Mod Podge. Now it's okay that this is still bumpy, okay? When we look at fossil bones or when we look at organisms, they are not smooth. This here shows all the ridges on the shells. This is going to show the rough texture of a leaf. So our goal today is to get our index cards drawn out. We want to take a picture of where we plan to lay everything out. 
and you may even get a chance to start putting Mod Podge over top of your newspaper um, folded pieces that create your image. Keep in mind that with a fossil, you do not see every single bone in an animal. You don't see um, every single detail of a leaf. So it's okay if it's a little bit scattered around. Um, but the main thing is, is we just want to work really, really hard to get our paper sculptures in similar shapes so that way it's recognizable. Something like this, I may end up using armature wire here to create some of these textures. This stuff I would let you guys use for everything except it is so, so, so thick that it's really hard to bend. So if you wanted to use it for something at a slight angle like this, then your armature wire would be the best tool to use. Other than armature wire, you will be using newspaper to make your sculptures. As soon as all of our sculptures have been mod podge down to our canvas, we are going to layer tissue paper to build up a color that looks like our rock. In the very end, once all of our layers have been glued down, our texture is showing through and it's still a little bit rough textured, we're going to use chalk pastels and we will be using the colors of rocks, so browns, charcoals, blacks, a little bit of orange or red, and we will simply brush that onto our rough textured tissue paper. So first step though is to draw out your image, to crinkle up some paper, get it into the shape that you're looking for, Mod Podge it down. And these little spots where you can see all the Mod Podge just goop in, that is totally fine. That gives us a little bit more texture. We want lots of texture on this canvas in the end. All right, so let's get to work. You guys should have a majority of your class time to be working. Do not rush through this. You wanna take your time. You are welcome to use your fingers. You can use a gesso brush, but you are responsible for cleaning up your space and your materials in the end.